So let's look at a new form, a new type of elliptic curves, namely the Montgomery curves, also named after Peter Montgomery. So Montgomery curves have a different curve equation. Now that's a bit mean because I told you that all curves are Weierstrass curves. Well, Weierstrass curves are the most general form of elliptic curves. So all Montgomery curves can be transformed into Weierstrass curves. But not all Weierstrass curves can be transformed into Montgomery curves. So why would we change the curve equation? What do we get from that? Well, first I want to say we will only work with projectively with Montgomery curves here because that has some advantages that we'll see later. And when working projectively, what we can actually do is we can just work with x and z coordinates. We can just completely ignore the y in our equations. So here we'll do that. We will only work with x and z coordinates. And point addition uh, on Montgomery curves in projective space with x z coordinates takes as input one point another point Q that we want to add and a difference D that is the difference between P and Q so the point P minus the point Q and then the addition formula looks like that for point addition we have this nice short formula for calculating the X value and this nice formula for calculating the z value. And that's how we calculate the new point. And that's it. Well, for doubling, we need another formula. If we want to double a point P, we calculate these formulas here that you can read up on later on. So we can actually calculate completely without the y-coordinate and we have much nicer addition formulas than with the Weierstrass curves. And since we're working projectively, we even have this point at infinity at our disposal, right? But we have this difference here that we need for point addition. As you can see, we use the z and the x value of the difference of those two points in our equation formula. So that's a bit odd because then we first have to compute the difference so we can add the points together. So how does that work? Because this is just adding the inverse point, right? So we have a point addition formula that requires us to first do a point addition. Hmm. Well, how does that work? That works exquisitely because we can combine it with the Montgomery letter that we've learned earlier. So why can we do that? Well, let's compute a Montgomery letter computation. So let's imagine our scalar, our secret scalar is this binary 0, 1, 1, 0. So the first bit is a zero. We take P and our zero is the point at infinity. The second bit is a one. So get in this case, so R zero is the point at infinity, the neutral element times P. So R zero is P. R one gets doubled r1 was p, so r1 has p plus p. Now we go into the next iteration. Next bit is 1 again. So go in this case, we add r0, which is p, to r1, which is p plus p. So r0 is now 3p. Then we double r1, which was 2p. So it's now p plus p plus p plus p, 4p. Now we go into the next iteration, the bit is 0, and so 
we go into this case again and we add our zero, which is 3p times r1, which is 4p, which is 7p, and r0 gets doubled and is 6p. So why why did I go through this example now? Because we wanted to know where this difference comes from. Well, if you pay attention, you'll see that actually R0 is always R1 minus P. So the difference between R1 and R0 is always the base point P. So this difference in our formula here is just always the base point that we use for scalar multiplication. That's quite handy. So in our Montgomery letter we just extend this point add function with an additional parameter that is p, that is the base point we want to calculate the scalar multiplication on. So now we have this difference between R0 and R1 for free. And we can go through the Montgomery letter and use our nice addition formulas and compute. So compared to Weierstrass curves with projective Montgomery curves plus letter we have a speed up. Uh, it's faster. Uh, the calculation formulas are much simpler so it's also simpler to implement them, right? Because we don't have to deal with a complex implementation. Um, we have xz arithmetic, so since in the end we, z, we can set z to 1 and go back to the f in place, we can just to the f in plane. We can just agree in our standard that we work in the affine plane, so we only have to transmit the x coordinate, which is handy because we don't need to actually send two coordinates or send some encoding. We can just send the x coordinate itself and it's enough for the other person to calculate again with x and z coordinates. Um, so that's actual point compression, that we only work with x-coordinates, or only transmit x-coordinates. That's true point compression. Um, another point I want to mention, although it's not that important for you within this course, is that the order of a Montgomery curve, so the number of points, is always a multiple of 8. So this means we can't have cofactor 1 curves, um, which can be problematic in some corner cases, but we won't worry about those within our lecture here.